Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken, this is the legendary Iron Man Army of One or Lone Wolf Run, and uh, we are trying to still beat the game on the highest difficulty with only one single soldier per mission. It's yet again another Avenger defense mission. As part of that, you can't field a single soldier, so it's one soldier per squad. We're going in with our typical team, the Reaper and Roby. And I am a, s a slightly bit less concerned than normally because by now we're kind of getting the hang of, uh, of it. Oh, shit, that was pulling them. I thought we could simply stand there and do a nice little overwatch trap. We can't. Shouldn't have moved with our Reaper because one of the things we could have done is a remote start for the car. Couple of hits onto the purifier. Nice little explosion. Our main problem is we can't see shit. The towers uh, don't have anyone in line of sight. So, realistically speaking, since they started to move in right away, We gotta do something. Moving into a solid position. This here is not a flanking position, but it is an okay position. It has half cover from one of them and full cover from both of the others. Let's try to kill the shield bearer. Overwatching, overwatching. Not the best first turn, a little bit sloppy. Yeah, we know all about her by now. It's not the first time that she that she is fighting us. Okay, we're at least injuring uh, him. Interesting. Besides, use uh, to use stasis on the tower. And the shield bearer will most likely simply try to get his shields up. Yep. Good, the plan is kill the shield bearer, remote start the car, and then get rid of uh, the Advent Priest. In that order, shield bearer will probably take two hits. But he might be exposed. He's not. Well. Couple of 50 50 shots. That's 10 points of damage, which is exactly as much as we can do with a shotgun. 100% chance to hit. 
75% chance to crit. There we go. Good. First part of the plan worked like a charm. Second part of the plan. Worked pretty well. Let's get rid of his cover. Well, or just kill him. We're moving right next to him so that the blade storm will finish him off. There we go. Good job. Advanced hair trigger and advanced conditioning. Okay. Soon the Chosen should arrive. And by soon I mean, matter of fact, I think this turn. But we do have Untouchable, which would be great. Okay, let's make sure she's not standing right here. Don't want to move uh, our Reaper at the moment. Reload for Roby. Lots of overwatch shots. And we might take a hit from the Chosen. Problem with her is if she doesn't attack right away. So we can use the untouchable. We're very likely to get a hit. Have no run and gun. Okay, let's blow our cover in order to spot her out. Because one of the things uh, that we immediately can see is whether or not she spots us out. She doesn't, which means she's not here, at least not. she couldn't see any of these areas. Okay, I'll go. Get some. Okay. We're taking the first big shot. We gotta fight with the Chosen soon, but we also gotta do it right. I only want to fight her and not her plus any other pack. Alright, let's go. I think she has positioned herself here. The camera just zoomed to here. Hmm. Still pretty convinced that she has positioned herself there. Oh, come on. Is she afraid to engage on the overwatches? Hard to believe, right? The towers are theoretical targets for her. Alright, time for a banish. That should remove all of her armor. And there are three chances to actually kill her. 
There we go. Execute it. Three times 15% isn't even that bad. You might wonder, but it isn't. Pretty good job. Easy. We showed the chosen who's boss. That's what we did. Good. Next stop, the big cannon. Because that's going to be a problem if we're not taking it out. Time for re-stealth. Yes. I'm on the move. Moving up. And moving up even further. <laughs> Execution on the uh, on the chosen right away. Very anticlimactical. Like here I am, the end boss, Radush, and that's gone. One-shotting the Chosen. It just shows again how Alpha Strikerish XCOM is. You want to be the one calling the shots and not the one defending. Oh, careful. Chrysalids can spot us out. Very careful here. Okay, so we can see the cannon. Thanks to our defense metrics, we're hitting it again. Best invention ever. No, we're not going to attack the aliens. We're preventing another shot after that, so we're fine. Oh, nice. They are even moving into range. That is helpful because the 32 points of damage soften them up quite a bit. The generator is down and the cannon is disabled. Now we just need to mop up the remaining enemy forces. Twenty-one percent. You know what? It's good enough to take some shots. Right sector put down. I go where I'm needed. Getting over to the other side. Two remote starts. And what are we seeing? Purifier. Oh, there's another sector pod. Another sector pod. Reloading. Reloading. Got it 
Overwatch, Overwatch. I think we're fine so far. Just gotta get rid of the remaining vehicles and then we can essentially start killing them one by one. That is the sound of a chrysalid. Gotta be careful. I will be positioned. My life is in your hands. Okay, we're too far away for the defense matrix. And I think we should get our Reaper back so that we can pull one pack at a time. Those guys are essentially asking for it, right? Sector port stands right there. All macho waiting for the remote start to happen. Enjoy the show. Unfortunately, it didn't um, shred as much armor as I wish it would have. But still, 20% chance to hit the sector port is good enough. Luckily, these things are huge. Don't want to hit the other pack. Don't want to pull like more than one for now. The cool part about the sector ports is they are such good targets because they also never like hide and have no defense ratings. Wow, we're doing really well. Lots of 25% shots just right there. Okay, we gotta deal with those guys first now. They clearly are going to cause problems. Sectopod is uh, friendly enough to remove all of the cover for us. But like I said, even though they are clustering up so nicely, gotta wait for uh, and clean up our home turf first. Let's go, Andromeda. Taking away some of the cover and vision. Very nice. Of 
Finally, the vision barrier is gone. I was hoping that they would also remove the stone. I do have an idea. This here takes care of the shell. Then we're going to go up here. Bladestorm will take care of the trooper. And we'll have untouchable against the fire. Yeah, maybe we are burning afterwards, because he's now going to take a shot at us, we're untouchable, and then we're taking... No, he's not taking a shot at us. He's trying to hit the tower. If you guys could all slowly but surely one at a time move to the towers, that would be great. Makes my job way easier because the defense matrix is all of our firepower. And of course we want to use it. Oh wow, we're we're hitting incredible shots this time. Doesn't matter all too much because otherwise it would just take longer. But I think just statistically we're pretty lucky in this particular case. And you often forget these things like how realistic is it to hit that many 20% shots, right? Or normally you should hit one out of five. And it's also not completely unheard of that you're hitting 0 out of 10 if you only have a 20% chance. You know, this one here looks like a really good positioning. High ground, flanking, and cover. Very high chance to fo uh, to kill it. And move back. Oh, I forgot we had death from above. Shit, I should use that more often. We do have death from above. Roby has death from above. We should use that to our advantage. I see everything. Arguably one of the most imbalanced abilities. This cool side effect about shooting at the sector port is we're removing all of the trees here and the stones. And the sector port ha even helps us by doing so. There we go, 20% shots.
trying to soften the smaller ones up as well. Yeah, but 20% is 20%. It's not a lot. So that will basically set them up for kills next turn. The sector pod had had enough. He's now uh, he's now trying to spot us out. Yep, break all of the cover. Very nice. They seem to abandon him. Just need one more hit on the sector pod, and then he's in execute range. Still trying to remove uh, the trees. Yeah, zero percent doesn't really help us. I'm on the move. No, that's just an eighty nine percent chance, and I rather would like to get away from the chrysalids. Taking our chances with the purifier, didn't work out. Maybe they come closer to the towers. Well, there's the next pack that we can deal with. Yeah, they seem to be... No, they don't. I was about to say they seem to be moving into the direction of the towers, but they are not. Okay. Let's start over here. The Archon unfortunately always has cover, but we have a lot of shots, so we'll get him eventually. Don't want blazing pinions to hit us. There we go. Good, next up, Purifier. If we kill him, he might explode and take away a lot of the walls. That's at least the hope. I think it's fair to say the hope did not materialize. Of course, whenever you want him to explode, he does not do so. Running and counting.
Move, 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 move. Ooh. Not what we wanted to see. Chrysalids. Lots and lots of chrysalids. I do have a um, I do have an idea though. Killing this guy. Trigger is implaceable. Okay, I'll go. I can move back. And I can still go on to Overwatch. Ninety-five is not a hundred. If there is one thing that you learn in XCOM, then ninety-five is not a hundred. Give me time to reload. Yeah, and maybe that you cannot rely on overwatch shots. Chrysalids are coming in. Luckily, we do have Bladestorm. Okay, let's start with the obvious threat, the chrysalids. I will soften everyone up so that they are in kill range for Bladestorm. And there we go. Good. Next up. We do have a 100% chance to hit. Reload. Hit. Hair trigger is exactly what we needed. We would be fine without it though as well. I think we're fine without being spotted out. Good, there is definitely another pack of chrysalids. We would have had untouchable even if he would be able to kill us, uh, to hit us. Twenty five percent to hit the purifier, good enough in my book. Thirty one, even nice, very nice. One of the chrysalids is burning.
All right, moving up. Uh, we should take the high ground. Okay. The chrysalids obviously don't know where we are. Though it's low hit point, uh, low percentage chances, uh, it's the safest way of dealing with it. Almost the last uh, car. We have one over here, which I think Roby can take out. Forty percent chance to hit him. Okay, very nice. Okay, starting to hit the last car. I know there are two chrysalids somewhere. We've destroyed all of the enemy siege emplacements. Excellent work, Commander. As you order, Commander. We are compromised. Careful, there's something in the ground here. Shit, that's exactly what shouldn't have happened. Gotta be careful now. Ooh. They're hitting this area. Ooh, so close. Sure, I've just waited because at some point they are starting to unborrow. I got it, right? Okay, short of the last decision, everything else was pretty much straightforward and we did not have many problems. But even small missteps can cost you a reaper from time to time. And there we're back in business. Get a lot of loot, some extra items, and even more important, 
we will not be ambushed for a few months now. Nice. Okay, before we choose something, let's see, we had like what, 12 more days left open. Okay. Uh, what did we want to do? This one here isn't bad. I think that one here was very good. We wanted to do the health one. Although a faction soldier isn't bad as well. Having another colonel uh, skirmisher could be helpful. We don't need another colonel though as much. I mean if it works out, it works out. It's great, don't get me wrong. But it's way more important for us overall to make sure that we feed as much um, health and mobility into Hogbite as humanly possible. Good. Maybe we get some more breakthroughs. Proximity mine is good. Uh, cost of assembling the hyper vital module minus fifty percent. You know, I'm not sure if that is such a great. If that's such a great breakthrough. Just saves us some supplies and that's about it. Strategic resource located. Perfect. Uh, we could get some supplies or alien alloys. Let's go for the alloys. We can always turn them into supplies later. No, let's we can't do that. It's an it's a VIP which is starting non concealed. Good. Facility in Brazil is unlocked. Perfect. We don't need the construction, to be honest. What we could do, though, is we could start with uh, the Shadow Chamber research. And that also brings us to the point that we theoretically could do the black side facility. Which I must think about. I guess we could be ready. Okay, so we got a lot of alloys. So, can make starting contact here, and then essentially, as soon as we feel like it, uh, we can finish the contact and directly start engaging on the facility.
Good. Found another engineer. I think we're not going to go on to any other mission, although some of them are only five days. I don't know, should we try to go for the five days or are we just waiting for next month and get a fresh set of um, missions? I think we're going to wait for next month. It's only one more day, half a day to be honest. And we can simply get uh, new abilities uh, then. Dark Tower slowly but surely makes his way just through Covert Ops missions to become higher level, which is interesting. I think this here is a good uh, point to end today's uh, episode. We're going to continue exactly the next time with a new month. Um, we are now in month number 16. It's been a pleasure as always. Uh, thank you for leaving a comment down below and uh, for hitting the like button. We see each other in the next episode when we're going to crush it. Bye bye.